says, dear Jessica, I hope this finds you well. I would like to uh, know what you and your sisters think of my issue. Now, the issue has nothing to do with me personally or my marriage. Rather, it has to do with my sister-in-law and her kids. Jess, my sister-in-law has three kids, two girls and a boy. I know some people would say this is the kids. Now to the issue at hand. My sister-in-law always makes her third child, who is the boy, kiss his sisters whenever they're playing. The girls are nine and seven years old, while the boy is just five. Sometimes she makes him kiss the girl so passionately that he tends to get an erection. Recently, my sister-in-law traveled to Ghana, so my wife offered to have the kids stay with us for the Easter holidays. During their stay, there was a time I didn't know of their whereabouts at home because I, it was unusually quiet. So I quietly climbed the stairs only to find the girls kissing and fondling their younger brother, all in the name of playing. I decided that for the remaining days that they will be in our care, I wouldn't let the boy sleep in the same room with his sisters because I feared the worst might happen. He cried himself to sleep every night because he wanted to be in the same room with his sisters. Jess, this isn't new to my wife though. I asked her to speak to her sister to let her know that if she doesn't stop letting the kids engage in such acts in the name of playing, they will eventually commit incest along the way. The first time my wife spoke to her sister about it, she totally ignored it and told my wife that I talk too much and it's an arbitrary thing. My wife has therefore decided not to talk to her about it ever again because according to her, her sister is such a loud mouth and a drama queen who can turn an issue, who can turn the issue on us if we're not careful. I've spoken to the kid's father about it, but he also has shown very little concern. I'm a very ardent viewer of your show, and there have been episodes where people, you know, with people committing incest with their family members and stuff like that, and I know you guys can take care of this. Am I overreacting? Are my concerns valid? If they are, how do I help these kids without coming across as being intrusive? Right, okay. So this is our first message for today. Who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? Who, okay, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, man. Yeah. I mean, what are you thinking? <laughs> this is very creepy. Very. I mean, and it's not even an arbitrary thing. So that, that one is it's, it's a misconception. It's not an arbitrary thing. And I feel this is what my dad would typically call siatra. It's like you overdo. But for me, I'm, not even, I'm more concerned about that boy taking that very problematic behavior into outside the domestic space where he feels so comfortable not to even seek consent before interacting with other females and now we are in a very woke era where women are very conscious about themselves and consent so if it's not kept very early on he's going to find himself in trouble with all this Me Too movement, finding yourself in the office space, mm -hmm. and your mom telling you it's all right to do it with your sister, also implies it's all right to do it with every other female that you meet. And so for me, she has to make it a family issue amongst the in-laws and her family, who is the authority figure? Who does this lady listen to? Because from all indications, the husband is okay with it. She's okay with it. She doesn't respect their opinion. It's a very serious issue. She has to make it a family issue for an authority figure to step in and get the lady to understand that it is not normal, even if it requires bringing in scientists or experts. I mean, now there are counselors in all sorts, coaches in every area. There are family counselors who have to point it out to her that it is a serious problematic issue. Apart from taking advantage of his sisters, this child is so innocent he has no idea of what he's doing. The next thing you, you realize, he's doing it to his mates in school. And here, as a brochure, as she's saying, that hmm. child would be in trouble right. very, 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 very early on. So they should make it a family issue. You don't joke with it. She doesn't respect any of you. Find an authority figure, even if it means bringing an external expert to talk to her. Do it here and now. Don't joke with it. Consent is a very serious issue. And this innocent boy is being misled by uninformed, uneducated, uninformed parents who feel they are woke. 
it's not in the interest of a child. He might even extend it to other females in the family. If she has a daughter in the house, she should be very, very careful around this boy. And you can't even blame the boy because he doesn't even know. That's all his mom has taught him. So social conditioning is very important. They should nip it in the bud now. Make it a family issue. My, my two cents. Mm. Okay. All right, let's come in studio. I don't know what you think, Rosina. This is... Um... <laughs> I don't know. Is abroche what? Behavior? Abroche. Uh, uh, no, I, 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 I don't get it. You see, the, 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 the abroche thing is that, okay, usually when it comes to um, public display of affection between people who are actually intimately involved and all that, it's very common to see maybe two abroche people expressing themselves on the street and nobody really raises an eyebrow. That is the abroche thing. You know what I mean? Two adults consider relationship or something even between family people cry even if they have to show affection by doing that usually just a little you know touch and go kiss but the description sounds like it's not just touch and go mm. and what i know is that when it comes to intimacy nobody really teaches anybody intimacy mm. you grow with it okay so now you are allowing these children to do that to explore themselves now the only problem here is that you are allowing the children to feel it's okay to explore your bodies with your siblings. And that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Because then they'll grow and then they'll be sleeping with each other in the house. You can't even control it. Mm. So it is a big deal. You're not making too much of a big deal out of it. It is a big deal. Mm. If I saw that, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be really worried. Even me, when I... <laughs> When, when I pick somebody else's baby or child, there's nothing that tells me to kiss that baby on the lip ever. Why? <laughs> not not <laughs> even the, the part. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only people I believe who are permitted to do that, usually it's like when the baby is fresh, 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 that bonding face. <laughs> no, it's just like some touch and go something. Not the... No. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, you know what I mean? I feel you. So, uh, for me, I think it's very disgusting to see. And I think that in this era where it's, we are getting, it's becoming more and more difficult to control kids or to lead them the right way because of um, things they are seeing, the, 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 the communities, how the community has just, you know, everybody's busy trying to look for money. There's really no order. There's mm -hmm. no law and everything. I think the last thing you want to do is to start that kind of behavior from your home. So it is certainly not on. Now, um, I think that by your approach in just splitting them up, what happens is that, you see, for a kid of that age who doesn't know what she's, he's doing, at least the sisters who are about seven, mm -hmm. they and can nine. understand and listen to reason. Mm. I think that instead of just separating them, maybe you should have an opportunity to counsel them, sort of, like mm. talk, to, talk them, to them, sort yeah. of. Talk to them, let them understand what they are doing, the implications. Maybe let them understand, okay, it's okay to kiss somebody, but... It, it has to be done in this context and not in this context. This is your brother. I mean, if this goes beyond her, these are the consequences. These are the implications. The thing is that sometimes, as soon as kids begin to grow, they, and they actually understand you. Even Dante at four, I'm able to dialogue with him and he's able to understand me, come back and ask questions when he feels like he has a gray area. So it's an opportunity to educate them. So you could actually change that behavior without necessarily, without necessarily even talking to the sister-in-law, especially because you feel like the sister-in-law doesn't care, mm. the husband too doesn't care. For all you know, they are swingers. They mess around left, right, center. So from, for them, sleeping with anybody is not a big deal. You understand? So maybe this is what you should do, counsel them and let them understand the implications of what they are doing. And then maybe you would have caused a change in your own small way. But by all means, this is not something that you should play with. And I wouldn't want to entertain them around my children without um, supervision. supervision. Mm. And whoever is taking care of them, I would ensure that it won't be like, hey, Jaisa, 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 no, no, not, not that kind of correction. It should be like, why are you doing this? So maybe the time that they are with you during the vacation, you should spend some time with the kids and try and counsel them mm. and try and wean them off that behavior. They are young, so it's easier for them to change than when they are like 17, 18 years old. Right. That's what I think. It's not too late. I agree when you say that he can counsel them in 
his own small way, but they are on holidays. Mm, they're going to go back. Once, go back. Yeah, <laughs> once they go back home, it's factory going to settings. be back to factory <laughs> settings because it looks like they've been doing it for a very long time. So I don't know how long these holidays are. So they can be there for like three months and then once they go back, because children pick up habits very, very quickly. So for that span, I don't think they can easily be rid of that behavior that has been with them for so long. I don't think so. Mm. Well, he can try. Yeah, the, the I don't know I'm saying that, mm. you see, for instance, um, when my kids were growing up, it was mm. very easy. Oh, kiss mommy, then kiss mommy, then, you know, one day, Dante comes from home. Oh, Dante, kiss mommy. He said no. Hey. Mm. Yeah, he He's said no. Yeah, he right? said no, he don't kiss me. I Why? mean, and it's not like the kind of kiss the guy is describing. It's mm -hmm. like the normal pet thing, like, oh, yeah. Dante, come on, you don't kiss me. No. He said no, he don't do it. Hey. He said, oh, my mouth will have saliva. I'll put saliva on his on his, on his <laughs> My four-year-old does that. Yes, yes, and, and, that then, then, and then, and then, him. Yes, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, like, and then, mm, mommy, yeah, I don't even like his that. Chicks, like, he do this. Yeah. And even <laughs> when the COVID yeah. started, then it was even worse. Ki uh, Dante, kiss mommy. Coronavirus. Mm. Hey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so <laughs> all I'm saying is that, look, mm. this guy has grown up almost every day <clears throat> with a kiss mommy, like a tradition, sort of. But it's not a French kiss or anything. Just like a normal person mm -hmm. on his cheek, yeah. on his forehead, his nose, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But now he goes to school one time, just for like a moment. He's educated about coronavirus and he comes home. And he doesn't kiss want to do, do it. Anymore, yeah. He says he won't do it again. And it's so bad that, look, I'm sure if his father decides to say that they kiss daddy, you're like, oh. Mm. Because uh, for some reason, he's realized that you don't kiss men. Right. Yeah. So even the cheap one cry, if the father wants to even plant it, well, the way he'll be doing like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like get off me. Yeah, you no, know, the little is like mm. but, but you, <laughs> you know, so I think that mm -hmm. there's an opportunity for change. Mm. True. You see, children do by example agreed. But sometimes there's a seed you can sow in a child, very young. Mm. And because the young the the child's mind is so fertile, so green, so open, it depends on how you sow it. Sow it. So even though you may think you have a limited time, three weeks, mm -hmm. you could actually sow a seed such that mm -hmm. it would ring a bell in their heads mm -hmm. to know that this is a not-not. Okay. So um, what I was also thinking was that um, because the kids are not yours, there's only so much you can yeah. do. There's only so much uh, intrusion that you can uh, indulge in, you see. Because someone would think that after a certain point, the kids are not yours, so mind your business. But they're in my house. But they are, yes, of course. But of <laughs> course. If, if they leave your house and they go back to their home, they are no longer on your turf. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is very serious, and it shouldn't be taken for granted. So even if it means that it, it has to get to a point where the kids have to be taken away from them, then I think it's, it's plausible because um, it's not a healthy practice. Yeah. It's not. Definitely it is not. It, like, my, my skin crept when you were, you were, you were yeah. reading. Like, I just could. Yeah. Because even with my kids, when, you know, children lo love to explore naturally. They love to touch this. They'll be touching that's all kinds learn, of things. Yeah. yeah, that's how they learn. Okay, they touch this. They are curious. They want to, they, you know, my, my, my kid brother intentionally drops things because she said it he, wants, he wants to know what is inside it. Mm. Okay very curious so um like you rightly said they are curious the mind is green so um the approach is very important how he's going to approach it not the you know the beating and you know at some yeah. point they get conditions to the, they get conditioned to the beating and now the Charlie, they, they become odeshi uh -huh. yeah. so the approach is very important you you guys have touched on a lot so i don't want mm. to repeat what you have said yeah so the approach is very important. He has to be as tactful as possible because mm. the kids are not his. They are his sisters or right. is it their brothers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. His but wife's yeah. sisters. Yeah. yeah, so he has to be very tactful about the approach. Cool. And hopefully, hopefully, they'll be able to, you know, uh, steer the children in a, in a, in a better direction because this is not good. No, no, no. All right. Good. Let, me, let me just go back to the message here for a second. Mm. Are you overreacting? No. No. Are your concerns valid? Yes. 
If they are, how do I help these kids without coming across as intrusive? Here's my take. Sometimes you have to come across as intrusive if you really care, and especially in a situation where the parents are not budging, like they don't see anything wrong with it. Um, you have to be nosy. Unless, of course, you really generally do not care about the, you know, the, the outcome um, in the future. And I believe you do, reason why you're even concerned right now. Um, I think, yes, definitely try your best. Do the whole, try and draw the kids in, let them know, ah, this is bad, you can't touch your brothers, and whatever, and lolo, whatever. <laughs> you know, do that, definitely, but also have a word with the parents and let them know that, Charlie, guys. I mean, I, I'm not trying to tell you guys how to raise your kids, but this is, con like, this is an issue for concern, and it, you need to look at it before it gets out of hand. And try and let them see reason. If that doesn't work, well, what else can you do? Mm. Really, what can you do? So, I mean, I wish you the best of luck with that. It's pretty tricky. Um, do write back to the show and let us know, you know, how things pan out. Says, uh, I feel for these kids. My dear, you're not overreacting at all, but you will surely be vindicated one day. I hope the kids will stay a little longer at your place so you can help matters a bit. Abena says, hearing the story makes me feel very sad. Please talk to your brother if possible. Let the boy stay with you and your wife for some time. Otherwise, one day you shall, be, you shall find them in the act. Mickey says, Mama, need that thing where they talk like that. That practice is a natural thing, oh. but you have to discipline them if you find them in the act. Did any of us play Mama ni Dada? Did you? I was always the child because... Ah, you were the baby. I, I so you very, never had any of the petite. <laughs> so they'll tell me that, oh, Mama ni Dada will be... <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I thought I was playing Mama ni Dada. But until I realized that there was, there was, there was a more a, serious <laughs> version. There was a version version 12 and I was doing version 0 0.5 because <laughs> my mom and... You see, we were, because we're all ladies in the house. Because mm -hmm. I have all these sisters. I don't right. even have a brother. Right. And I think it were living in cantonments so and the boys' quarters... The, the men were very, very old, and the, mm. those around a lot of ladies in the house. Mm. So our mama and dada was just Oof. cooking in chancing, like milk tin, oh, open oh, it. Oh. Then we cook, and even though actually we were in countermen, so it was bougie, bougie so, mommy, <laughs> that, like, you know, we are cooking, and every, we never cook with real items, you know, the sand and those mm. things, you mm. understand? So for me, we played, ma like, we played it, but after it listening to yeah. the versions that exist, I realized that we were really playing. We didn't even <laughs> have no idea what was going on. Claudia, did you ever play it? <laughs> Just curious, did you ever play it? My mom was very strict. Actually, we didn't have playmates growing up. It was uh -huh. just my yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> It was her way of controlling us because she was a single mom. Right. So mm. it was just my brother and I. We didn't really have playmates. From school, you are stuck home, read mm. one hour of TV, go to bed. Weekends, you'll find all ways of keeping you busy. <laughs> so it, it's quite a new concept to me. I heard it a lot, but I never could experience it because playmates... Only in school. Yeah. When we come home, it's just my brother and I. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, let me finish up on the messages. Debbie says, this is a very sad issue. My brother, you are not overreacting. You've done your part, but make sure you don't allow the little boy to sleep with his sisters. Marvin says, this is already incest. For the fact that parents are not taking this seriously is alarming, and it's also fishy. And if age isn't to be taken into account, this should not be entertained among siblings. There's a backstory. A secret, something fishy somewhere, this message says. And finally, Kojo says, if they show no concern, I think while they stay with you, kindly brainwash them against those things. Um, if it doesn't work, report the parents to Child Rights International. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah. It, depends on the, it depends on the extent of what you are seeing. I mm -hmm. mean, if it's really bad, yeah, you should. Yeah. Great. So, uh, yeah, that's our first message that came through. We've got a couple more to go through.